This is a Maria Sweet. And I'm Crystal Cedar. And you're listening to Heart Mind Expressions Podcast. Today, we are going to be discussing part two of our daily energy field awareness practices, especially during quarantine. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing how we can recharge and replace energy after a clearing or removal using nature elements and sound. So when you think of recharging, what comes to your mind on that kind of recharging? I mean, maybe somebody might thinking, is it, is it recharging like a battery? Is it recharging, you know, like you're doing your cell phone or, or something else like that? Some people might be wondering, what does recharging mean? So what does that mean to you? So in our previous uh, discussion before this, we talked a lot about identifying toxic relationships, how they affect your energy field, and how to remove those lower frequency energies and negative energies through some suggested methods such as cord cutting, smudging, and meditation. And after you remove an energy you cannot destroy energy you can only move it you have to replace it with another energy or else the same energy returns back into the same field and so in this case in this discussion we're going to be talking about how to recharge or replace the energy that you just removed with positive higher frequency and higher vibration energies using elements from nature And also to using sound, which is a resource that a lot of people always forget that they have. As human beings, we are made up of water. And so we react to sound frequencies and we react to nature frequencies the strongest. So we're going to go over a couple of those methods today. So like when people are feeling drained. So let's talk about draining out. When you have So let's imagine your energy field. That energy field is running on a battery. And in our bodies, that battery energetically is called our solar chakra. Our solar chakra is our battery. It's located somewhere between the heart chakra and the sacral chakra. So between our heart and our gut is our battery. And when you're around somebody that's draining or when you are in a practice or in a job that requires you to put a lot of your own personal energy into your work, such as uh, a lot of essential workers right now, even though they're just like your regular grocery store clerks, you know, they're putting themselves on the front lines. If you're a healthcare worker, you're definitely on the front lines. And every day you're having to invest your, your, energy, your human energy, like your own personal energy into that work to protect yourself against fear frequencies, uh, protecting yourself against vampirism from maybe some coworkers or other people that might be in your workplace, such as hospitals. Hospitals are huge draining vortexes of energies. Even if you're not the one that's being tended to, even you visiting somebody or keeping somebody company in a hospital can be very, very draining. We need, to, we need to recharge and we need to replace the energies that are drained from us right away. Otherwise, the same lower frequencies and lower vibrations could return instead. And then you have to start the process of removal and mindfulness all over again. So the first method that I'd like to kind of suggest is nature because it's the closest thing to us. We don't need to go into fancy places or spas or have fancy tools necessarily to recharge. Nature is our most ancient way that we recharge as a human species. So Amaria, let's talk about, let's talk about some trees. I love nature. I have always been a tree hugger, even if I didn't like the term or whatever people want to do. I love the energy that trees have because you can really tap into an amazing network. If you've ever watched the movie Avatar, that's actually one that I really like because there's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of disclosure, fun things. And looking at the way that they network the trees and the Navu or Navi, I guess I'm trying to remember how you say them, the little, the blue people together, 
it's amazing how they were tapping in and you know yeah they were connecting their um their hair with whatever little beings that they had and with the trees but we kind of have that same connection in a way at the same time that we just all you got to do is touch a tree um you can just even just be mindful maybe you got a tree in your yard that you want to just be mindful with you can sit with that tree because they have deep deep networks of roots and even mushrooms uh is a is another example of those vast networks that of energy fields that these natural elemental type beings or plant beings plant medicines do and really really cool i live in southeast idaho we have birch trees the quaking aspens a lot of people like to call them the birch bark is actually a medicine and you can like if i don't suggest stripping a tree that's alive that's abusive to the tree usually yeah, what i no prefer to do is find one that's already fallen and it's died or you find branches that are dead and you take the bark from the branches that have already dried naturally because that's nature's medicine mama gaia gave us those medicines and you can like break up that bark you can grind it up uh, make a powder if you want to go that far if you're into distilling you can distill the oils from that and it'll make kind of a minty smell birch oil which you'll find um the what is it ben gay was the old rubbing cream that people would use that had that smell that's kind of that birch birch bark smell it's really good for your joints really good for bone pain that's what birch is really amazing for pine if you live around pine areas i know that we've got some white pine out here i think we've got some red pine the needles are really really good tea there's a lot of minerals in those um if you like more of the bitter taste you can you can do them green a lot of people like to do them uh dried you can also roast them if there's no right or wrong you know just like having your coffee how do you like it with cream with sugar you know whatever and we've got juniper as another one here you can use the berries you can use the i guess prickly what do you call them they're not they're the needles i guess they're kind of the funnier needles um a lot of oh what's the name of the wood cedar we have a lot of cedar out here and that's another really good medicine nice. and so we can really take advantage of the energies that those plants have. I personally love like the pine and like the, the more con coniferous trees because I really like the smell and those make a really nice thing. But I also like to do like, I guess a tea, I'm trying to even think what to call it or a poultice, you kind of grind it up. Like maybe you get a bruise or something. That's why I love the birch. It's really great for that. I like to use sage. I know it's kind of more of a bushy type thing, but I'll harvest kind of the old dried leaves in the fall or sometimes in the winter if we don't have a ton of snow and it's kind of already been through some of the, uh, I like to do the solstice moons and things just to kind of get that extra juicy energy. And I'll break mine up and boil it, put it in my bathtub and then just kind of skim out stuff. And that I can really feel just really relaxed and rejuvenated. It's a very cleansing tea bath. And that's kind of what I like to do as far as with the local plants that we have here that are my favorites. I also like to put my hands and my feet in the dirt. And in the winter time, I'll even do it in the ice and snow. You don't have to go to those extremes. There are really cool studies on what extreme temperatures and exposing to your, yourself to those can do to help with your longevity. Uh, I don't like cold showers, but sometimes when I need an immune boost, maybe I feel like I've had an illness or something, I'll take a really, really, really hot bath to where it's like, you know how you get that kind of rush feeling like, oh, it's too hot. And then I'll take a pitcher of cold water and I'll just dump it on me and I'll just keep dumping it on me until I get chilled. And then I'll just towel dry and get ready. And it's amazing the energy you get. So whatever works, the grounding could be a lot of different ways on recharging and replacing your energy. And with those natural herbs 
and plants that are around. If you harvest locally in your area, please make sure it's a plant that's ready to harvest. Maybe its shoots are already dead and you know they've already dried, that's perfect. If you're doing sweet grass, just make sure it's late in the year and there's plenty of sweet grass around. If there's not, please don't harvest. And also with white sage or blue sage, there's been some shortages in the areas that I've seen around in the creek beds. Please don't harvest and allow it to seed for a few years before. I like to make sure there's a big patch and a few other patches around, and then I'll only harvest about an eighth or less, and then make sure to leave the roots, never ever take the roots. And then I clip down to where you've got about eight to 12 inches of plant that can still come back the next year. So be really, really careful in your harvesting if you do decide to harvest. And of course we do have mint here, wild, as well as I've seen some wild um, garlic, which has been kind of fun. So one way that we can recharge with nature element um, medicines is to take it uh, in, like uh, orally, like to ingest it or drink it in a tea, boil it in a tea. Um, to create a salve from it or to um sit with it like actually like walk in the dirt with your bare feet or put yeah. your hands into it. gardening gardening is a great great way how we can give back and show reciprocity to mother nature and mama gaia um and in return what we get is our beautiful recharge from mother earth herself like through her pores through her dirt through roots and through leaves and plants in this time of quarantine, a lot of people don't have like a yard, especially if you're listening to us from a more urban setting, like maybe you don't have a tree or maybe you don't have a, a little plot of grass. You can sit with a potted plant. Potted plants are still a way that we can show reciprocity for Mother Earth and that she can give us uh, that kind of balancing natural earth energy back even though it's a small little potted plant i'll bet you if you love on that plant that plant will blow up and be amazing and then that way they're a member of your family a yeah. lot of people take potted plants for granted not you plant parents out there i'm pretty sure there's a lot of crazy succulent people out there that are like i love my plants <laughs> but a lot of people will you know they just it's been a plant that they've been watering and it looks pretty but they don't really understand energetically they are holding a space for you if you choose to engage with it and interact with it and especially during this time of quarantine and if you're you happen to be doing some spring cleaning maybe you bring that plant out to be in a more high traffic place or maybe in a place of more honor and respect where you can greet it every day and it can be more of a daily presence. Maybe you move it from the back corner of the room and maybe you leave it on your desk where you're now working from home to kind of give you that nature balance so that you're not draining out online and then you have like a backup, you have a support with you from nature. The second way that I'd love us to kind of go over is how we recharge with crystals. So crystals are an element of nature. If you can't get out and sit with your favorite tree or near your favorite medicine shrub, crystals are from nature. They come from her, they are gifts from her that carry frequency and vibration. Uh, crystals are not solids nor liquids. Quartzes in particular, quartzes are not solids nor liquids. They oscillate and vibrate at a very, very, very high frequency. And because of that super ninja oscillation, it affects the water within our bodies to react in certain ways. And that's where we get crystal resonance. Sometimes you resonate more with onyx, sometimes you resonate more with lava rock. It just depends on your energy makeup. And so as an example, Amaria, what is a favorite crystal that you love to recharge with? Like, let's say, for example, you. Um, with your uh, current aches and pains right now? Like energetically, what is a crystal that you like to recharge with? Mine is felspar. I love moonstone, moonstone labradorite. You can see my rings. <laughs> I've and got... felspar is a, is a mineral that has like a sparkliness. So felspar is the name of the family. And then the individuals are examples of like moonstone, I'm not sure if you're seeing the flash on it. Yeah, those yeah, that are watching. yeah, that's labradorite. So, so I these love are examples flash. of feldspar. Oh yeah, 
for me, they're just really, really grounding. Um, it feels calm, kind of magical. And even like with my rings, I can feel like a visible, for me, it's like visible colors. Um, also, there's like a weight to it that goes to my heart with the felspar stones. And I mean, it's just, it doesn't matter how flashy they are. Um, you can see like the really high quality jewelry grade are extremely flashy. Um, my son has a ring that's rainbow moonstone. This one's just the blue indigo moonstone. Uh, but depending on the flash, I've seen, I've got another one in the other room that's a big point. The one that I got for 75 cents. <laughs> Sometimes I get that really is. good deals. I love it. And it doesn't yeah. have a lot of flash, but oh man, you hold it. I think it's like seven grams. I mean, this thing has got weight to it and it's almost like holding a baby. I mean, it's got that much energy to it. It just, there's so much love to that crystal. And even my son, my middle son, who's can be really skeptical on spiritual things when he picked it up, he's like, mom, this is a special stone. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, yeah, it is, buddy. That's cool that you're recognizing that. That shows that you've, you're vibrating at a really high spirituality right now. So I point that out so my kids can learn that even something that simple as recognizing a feeling, it really is a type of a spirituality that we're stepping into that raises our frequency. Um, like an energetic spirituality, like the mm -hmm. most ancient kind of spirituality. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah. So what, what kind of stone is something that you would ground to? Um, I, in our previous uh, shows, I've recommended calcites. Oh, yeah. uh, like yellow calcite has been a really big favorite for me or golden calcite. Calcite is a really soft mineral. It's like kind of waxy in texture. I don't usually work with large stones when I recharge. I like smaller palm stones so that I can kind of move them wherever I need them to go. Um, and they're easy to keep in my pocket, especially when I'm doing a high traffic volume day for uh, energetic readings with people and sessions. I need something that I can keep with me on always. Um, but interestingly, uh, you have an abalone shell back there. Oh, yeah. And I've actually been recharging a lot with abalone uh, here oh, wow. in, yeah, here in Northern California, we have a lot of red abalone. And the red abalone mother of pearl on the inside is so beautiful. It's yeah, like a it's like a unicorn holographic like white and blue. And I love working just holding the abalone shell. Sometimes I'll rinse it in cold running water first. And I just like to sit with the shell and work with ocean nature recharging. Mm. And also to any removing that I need to do. And water energy or ocean energy is very calming and I tend to have too much fire <laughs> and so this year whenever I've been challenged I have to remind myself more water be like water just like Bruce Lee says be like water <laughs> that's really cool I yeah, learned because something it, on that it helps. yeah because mother of pearl is a mineral within itself it's it's a mineral that oh. abalone and oysters create Really and it pretty. was highly prized. Yeah, it was highly prized in ancient times. So you can use your any seashells that you found. You can use uh, river rock if you've collected, like, you know, pebbles along the river. If you ask for permission first from the river, I have to highly emphasize that, you know, if you find something pretty in a river or riverbed, ask the river spirit if it's okay if you can take this one piece or make an offering maybe throw down some tobacco or maybe leave like a sweets offering before you take something from that riverbed or from that ocean uh, but these are other ways that we can bring nature elements into our daily lives and recharge from them uh, from nature um, let's go a little bit about the importance of recharging um, Amaria, from nature elements versus recharging from people or living beings. Right. <laughs> that, that one, <laughs> it hits deep because I've been vampired on a few times. Um, I think a lot of times as energy workers, that tends to be something that happens. But it, it can happen with anybody. If you're the type of person that someone, you feel like everyone wants to tell their 
their problems to, but then it's like you feel so drained at the end of the day, then you're one of those too. Yeah. So usually what I do is I, I think of, you know, what can I do to ground myself? A lot of times I'll cross my ankles if I'm around someone that might be overly toxic, just because it's kind of that subconscious, not mine. Uh, sometimes if I'm not in a place where I can and it's kind of awkward, maybe wherever I might be, then I like to just really keep a positive flow, positive attitude. It really helps me because when someone is directing really negative energy, you can almost feel it hit you. Like sometimes in the heart you've, or you've felt somebody that's like really ugh, come into a room, no fun because what they're doing is they're, it's almost like they're that sucker fish, like looking for the algae and they just honed in on you and you felt that. And so that's why we don't want to be lashing out. Like when we're upset, instead of giving ourselves a timeout, we don't want to be lashing at people or even being that victim that's like, you know, let it off your chest, but don't be, oh my God, this is the most horrible thing this, this whole day. And then, how long was the problem that ha that happened? Oh, it was like 10 seconds long and you're still lamenting. So that's that drawing on that icky negative energy yeah. and still pulling that battery and bringing people down because you want a pity party. And sometimes people kind of have that feeling of like, well, maybe I should, oh, you know, we don't have to enable people to feed on our energy. If someone's having a bad day, we can hear them without becoming a part of it. Like, wow, you know, that's too bad. I'm really hoping that that's a better day or wow, you know, hopefully you can find something to smile about today. It's that stinks that that happened or, you know, for, yeah. because it really truly pulls a person down, not just energetically, but physically it affects your immune system. It affects the way you might feel. And then you might be the person that ends up kicking the cat <laughs> later so we can reframe instead of letting go towards a person or drawing off their energy. A lot of times I'll shift my energy if I'm really having a frustrated time. And I've even made what's called an anger bat <laughs> with rolled up newspaper and tape. And I can just whack a pillow like I am so angry and let it out. And because I don't want to do that to Mama Gaia. I don't want to discharge yes. like that to her. And I don't want to do that to my crystals. So I'll let it out first. And then that's when I come back and I'm just like, oh, thank you. What am I grateful for? And this is how I, I take it from that recharging on other people or, you know, to get my crap off and yell at my kids instead of yelling at them. It's the, okay, hey guys, I need some time for a minute to recharge. I'll do my five minutes or whatever, and then I'll once I've brought in my energy down to a level where I'm calm, then I can work with them. Because we know how kids can be. We know how teenagers can be. Yes. <laughs> it can be yes. stressful, but at the same time, when they're taking cues off of, well, what's mom going to do if I push her buttons? They're starting to see now that I'm going to have my boundaries and say, dude, uh, -uh please give me my space. And then, but they realize later when I come back, it's not that, you know, guys, shut up, leave me alone. Yeah, I'm going to vampire your energy. So I feel better, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. they're starting to squabble less. So it's kind of a snowball effect that I've noticed. Yeah. A lot of people will take that projection and program of anger because, you know, it's like what their parents did. It's what their dad did. Right. you know, around them when they were little, or it's what their mom did when they were little. And it's like a crutch almost. It's like a lazy crutch because you're too lazy to actually establish real emotional boundaries for yourself, emotional and energetic boundaries for yourself. You just resort to yelling because it's easy and because it's always been, but we're in a new age now where we're trying to end negative patterns and behaviors. We're trying to end toxic relationships. And we're trying to start a new age where you're leading by a positive and high frequency, high vibrational, energetic example for not only you and your partner, but also to for your kids. If you have kids, it's like, why are you going to yell at your kids? You're the one with the problem. Right. <laughs> you're the one that vampired off of humans and other people 
picked up on their nasty little attachments and entities. And now those entities are tired and hungry because you're drained out. Now they want to jump to your kids. So what are you going to do? Those entities are going to drive you to yell at your kids or do stupid, shady, manipulative crap to your friends, you know, and to your spouse and maybe to your parents. And it's like, it's a feeding cycle. And so when we learn how to redirect recharging off of human beings and animals too, like right. this is including with anyone in our household that's a living being, when we, do, we direct that recharging back to nature, back to Mama Gaia, she can really handle our crap, dude. Like she's just like, oh, I see what's going on here. Yeah. Number one, let's cut off this entity. Number two, freaking check yourself before you wreck yourself because right. you're a hot mess and sit down on this earth that I've provided for you or take off your shoes and your socks and walk in this dirt that I've provided for you. Put your hands on the trunk of this tree, maybe even your forehead, put your third eye on this, you know, the ground or on the bark of this tree and freaking ground in and recharge from me versus humans that can't handle your crap. <laughs> right. Right. There's so many releasing techniques that you can use that, uh, it's amazing the difference. Raise that frequency. Let that shit go because it's not worth opening your mouth and ruining something that you love or hurting somebody that you love. Because, you know, we've been on that receiving side and we know it's no fun. So we got this. Right. And for people that unconsciously have been feeding off of other people's energies, it's not that hard to stop. All you have to do is just go within yourself and be like, you know what? I'm really drained. But instead of waiting for somebody to call and answer my call, because now nobody wants to, because they know that I'm just looking around the <laughs> vampire. Why don't, why don't I do like the faster thing and then just do some gardening, pull up some weeds or maybe rake some leaves or go for a walk outside, you know, recharge from nature. It's faster. It's more efficient and it can really handle your crap. Versus trying to appeal to a human or to an animal that's like, what the heck is this? Like, I ain't your battery. <laughs> You're the hot mess. That's you. <laughs> right? Right. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. And I love that people are doing this because I've seen it more and more with just communicating with people. I've learned so much about just being a better person just by interacting with happy people, you know, I, you grow up sometimes and people are, I don't like a morning person or I love a morning person, dude. They're fun. They might whistle and whatever. Yeah. And I'm not always chirpy and whatever, but when I'm around a morning person, I'm like, that made my day. That cool person just woke up smiling and happy. I can go to bed smiling and happy and make them have a cool smile at that time. You know, just take turns giving a smile to somebody else. Yeah. Receive, give, you know, it's that that balance and that harmony of, you know, we want to project on people when we're happy, you know, give them a little bit of light, but we don't want to do it when we're down because then it, it's crazy, but it's easier to pull people down than it is to lift them up. Yeah. And that's why it's harder in the beginning to recharge from nature versus people because the program, the colonization is drain your fellow people first, instead of going to the obvious ancient choice that our ancestors made of recharging with nature, right. because that way we can always stay down as a species. You know, we can always stay down as a race. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I work with people uh, about energy vampirism, I've noticed that people who recharge from nature elements whether it's crystals or running or going for a walk or gardening outside or even just doing things outside. Like if you're a musician, instead of playing guitar in your cooped up apartment, maybe you go outside to your balcony, yeah. you know, and you practice outside. Or maybe if you have a small little patio with no plants, but the sun is shining really nicely mm -hmm. on your patio, why don't you take a towel outside and play outside, practice your chords out there the charge that you get from recharging from elements of nature lasts longer oh. than recharging off of a human being or a living being. And you don't get a, a crash. You know, you don't get that, that vampire crash because it's real. Um, people with a lot of manic depressive orders 
disorders and symptoms, those are energy vampires a lot of times, sometimes, because it, it's very draining to be around a person like that. But not only that, you know, not only do you have to go through that fit, but then you're also expected to recharge that person again. <laughs> that's, right. that's challenging. Yeah. Um, or with your animals, like, let's say, you know, you're going crazy because you're locked up in your house for two, three weeks. And the only battery that you've had was this poor little animal that doesn't understand what's going on. And is just happy that you're going to be home for three weeks. But now it's been a battery for you for three weeks because you don't have the, the confidence to go outside. You know, it's really important at this time to recharge off of nature. I'm not saying you have to drive to a beach. You don't have to drive to a forest. Just Do you stay have a with sunny the- window. That could be another yes. thing. Exactly. Neglected yard, neglected patio, <laughs> right? The charge is going to last you a lot longer and it's a lot more sustainable because that is the ancient way that our ancestors used in pre, 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 pre ancient times. Since the beginning of our species, we've always recharged and cleansed with nature. We never look to each other because everybody the, else is recharging with nature. <laughs> the problems have come whenever society has crashed and tanked each time. It's been when the technology has gotten so much that the spirituality is gone. We've got to be able to keep that spirituality with it because it works hand in hand. Technology is spiritual, but if we can't use it with the right spirituality, you know, then we screw it up every time, unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Kind of clumsy that way. Yes. And especially with people who are falling ill right now, we may be called on to be batteries for people that we love. It doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice yourself and do this whole martyr thing. It just means you're going to have to recharge yourself even more with the intention of natural elements to make sure that you have enough charge to assist people. Like a lot of the healthcare workers that I've been working in sessions with right now, they're forgetting Like you can't recharge as if, you know, we weren't in a quarantine. You're going to have to recharge yourself 10 times stronger than you usually do and protect yourself 10 times stronger because people are scared. You know, fear is a fast drainer, like fast, fast drainer. And I, I've got a, an idea that comes to mind just by, you know, exercises I've done with NLP and with helping people instead of when you know, you're going to be going with somebody or meeting someone or being with somebody that's more of one of those battery drainers, we can step forward. And instead of saying, you know, Hey, how you doing? Or how's your day? Cause that's, is, that's an opening invitation for the of oh, shit. That's oh going to God. That is so true. Instead that is so of true. That, you could say, Oh, it's so nice to see your smiling face today. Or I really like that color on you that it's just kind of a happy color. And so, hey, you know, I'm really grateful for blah, blah, blah. What are you grateful for today? Maybe starting a conversation off like that because it's going to put them in a different state. In NLP, we like to do what's called changing state or reframing. And so in a way that could be doing a reframe with that person and you're setting a different anchor. You're setting a positive anchor for that conversation and you can lead from there because they're already in an altered state of, wait, that wasn't the way they usually greet me. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I liked that it was sunny today. Or, well, thank you. God, wow, that was really nice. And all of a sudden, they're not thinking of, oh, my, I busted my toe again. And, and I've got this chronic fungus that, you know, and, and that smell. And, uh, you know, we're going to have those people. <laughs> you can't avoid, it that, or avoid that totally. But we can direct the energy to where we're shielding ourselves with that positive energy energy and we're able to help them raise themselves up to a higher level because then they're getting into the moment and thinking about oh what am I thankful for and if they're just really really grouchy well I can't think of a goddamn thing right now that I'm grateful for well that's just too bad but you know I hope that it gets better we can always still do what we can to put that more positivity and we can excuse ourselves. We don't have to be around that if it's going to be that negative of a, you know, well, Hey, it's, it looks like you're having a really bad day. I really got stuff I need to do. And, you know, Hey, when you're feeling a little bit better, let's catch up. You know, we don't have to hang out right then and we can excuse ourselves and have boundaries. Yeah. The, um, I like how when you mentioned 
lead off with a compliment or a redirected frame versus a how are you invitation right. of vampire. You know, like, <laughs> right. it makes a really big difference with your, <laughs> with your emotional limits and boundaries. Right. Um, and it also can help start to, for you to plant seeds in other people to recharge from nature. Like when you said, it's a really beautiful day. And, you know, some people are just like so into themselves. They're like, yeah, actually, it is a really beautiful day. I'm going to stay outside, actually, all up in it and breathe some fresh air and take in some of this natural vitamin D from the sun because we can see it today and things like that. The um, Another really great way that is a a really sustainable way to recharge yourself and replace any energies that you've removed that don't belong to you. Or if you're in a lower frequency place and you need to get back up higher really quickly is by sound, sound medicine and sound healing. Sound healing doesn't necessarily have to be with singing bowls and chanting. Sound medicine could be punk. <laughs> it could be metal. It can be thrash. <laughs> if yeah. you're me. Oh, there's you know? some days. Yeah, I love the hard, hard, hard stuff. And I know these metalheads on here do. Woo! Yes. All, you, all you guys are awesome. I love, 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 love our metalhead listeners. They yeah. really have a soft place in my heart because, you know, every single one of the every one of those guys that I've met have had like, they're like the biggest teddy bear and wow. There's a lot of veterans. Amazing. Amazing. So let's get some rock on girl. Yeah. (laughs) The, um, the, 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 what the frequencies that I've noticed in most of the metal and the punk and the thrash that I love, it's the tempo of the frequency. When you're listening to that fast, thrashy, you know, like drumming, it's like clearing, like, like it's literally spinning you so fast that lower frequencies can't hang out. It's like, cause you're, you're in this, in this happiness, you know, you're in this joy, you're in a pit, you're running around with your friends, you're going crazy. It's like total unleashed joy I love it. that gets a little physical sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't miss the pit. I really don't miss the pit. <laughs> um, but At the same time, sometimes people don't know that it can also recharge you in a slower, awesomer way. And that's where natural ancient sounds like listening to falling rainwater or listening to ocean sounds or listening to natural instruments made out of nature, like natural reed flute or uh, natural skin drum with elders versus a whole drum kit you know time a drum kit with all the hi-hat blah 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 fanciness especially because nowadays a lot of the instruments are digital you know right right yeah i think even like we were talking earlier about the metal flute because i play a regular orchestral flute and the metal even i mean that still comes the it's a copper core and it's got a silver coat on it and that's still some powerful medicine with the copper and the silver with that, that yes. flute. And maybe you like uh, brass instruments. Those are powerful. Some people like Correct. the reed instruments. Yep. Those are really nice. So whatever it is for you musically. I mean, and I know there's a ton of musicians on here because we've got all those local bands that are being played. The awesome bands from Las Vegas and L.A. And I'm sure they're from all over the country even. God, you guys, you've got your guitar, your bass. Maybe uh, you happen to, some of you guys might be cello players. I know we got a lot of rockers that have been incorporating strings, which I love. The string and Guitar players. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and le- well, the, what I'm thinking of is the violin is actually really close to the human voice. Oh, um, which is really, really cool. Yeah, yes. Uh, on those string instruments. So, oh, cello God, is yeah. very heart chakra kind of like bass is obviously root chakra signal yeah when we are recharging from actual frequencies or are lucky enough to know how to practice creating uh, authentic sound frequencies through our own instruments it's something that is so sustainable rather than recharging off of a human being or recharging off of an animal because it's one it's your own expression 
So you're recharging yourself off of your own artistic expression that might be coming through you from the universe or that might be coming through you from your ancestors or maybe might be coming through you from your guides. Um, and they you know, are using your instrument as a vessel or as an instrument to be like, okay, you really need to hear this frequency right now. So we're gonna send you this song and then it's gonna be up to you to kind of work it out. You can record it and then play it back to yourself. And then that will be your mantra. That will be your recharge that you can reference later when you're feeling drained out. You'll be like, dude, I did that one riff. Where's that riff? I'll add some tracks to it. I'll add some drum to it. And boom, all of a sudden you have a healing song. You have a there medicine song. Heck yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, how many people listening have got that music medicine? I mean, you guys rock it. Rock it. That's powerful medicine right there. Yeah. Very powerful. And you don't even have to have expensive equipment. Like you can use bells. You can use just your hands on a tabletop. You can, um, what a lot of people like to do outside if they're at a beach is they'll just like to whistle into the wind, you know, cause it's blowing anyway. So you might as well produce your own wind and lend to mother nature's orchestra of when that's going on whistling into the wind that's like really good and you could do that anywhere <laughs> oh yeah well and most <laughs> people planes, have smartphones the by the reviews by there's, the there's so many different apps you can mix to and oh yeah super fun if we're going to take away if people are going to take away one thing from our discussion today i would like it for be for people to recharge from nature elements not people or living beings yes yes i agree Number one, two, three. very very important and be mindful of, of uh, and for people to be mindful of when that is happening like if they are in a condition where they're just used to vampiring energy from other people it's not too late to stop yourself mm -hmm build up an awareness and then start practicing some of the methods that me and Amaria have been suggesting for recharging. We went over crystals, we went over recharging from trees and tree medicines, teas, very simple teas that you can create for yourself. And then also too from sound, recharging yourself from sound. This has been really fun. I am excited to hear from you guys, the audience. Put your, uh, you can comment down below, of course, on YouTube, listeners on C4OC Radio Network and Revelation Radio Network. You guys uh, can leave a message with Steve-O or with Denny, any of those awesome guys there. We'd love to hear from you guys. How is recharging helping you in your life on maybe reducing the amount of triggers you might have? On the crystals, what crystals have you bought lately for yourself or that maybe you found something that, that has connected to you? We would love to hear your feedback and how those things are helping you. And if you've got a suggestion for another show, maybe a question, please, please feel free to answer crystals, information and knowledge on crystals themselves and rocks and stones. It just blows me away. I know a few here and there. This girl knows her stuff on crystal energies. It's amazing. And then her knowledge of just the rich histories. Oh my God. I am just absolutely blown away with Crystal and her knowledge on that. I've learned so much from you, Crystal. Thank you. Thanks. I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we like to nerd out, dude. <laughs> well, this is Amaria Sweet. And I'm Crystal Cedar. And you've been listening to heart mind expressions podcast thanks so much guys love you